Hi everyone. For many people with chronic illness, pinpointing the exact trigger can feel a bit like searching for a needle in a haystack. But what if the answer lies not in a singular event that brought this on, but a series of interconnected factors? And here's the big question. What if, like my guest today, you know that you have structural damage in your body caused by a vaccine injury? Will things like brain retraining and working with the nervous system help? Or do you need to take a completely different path to recovery. Today's guest will dive into all of this, including exactly what finally allowed her to fully recover. Hi everyone, I'm Raylan. On this channel, you'll find over 170 inspiring recovery stories from conditions like ME-CFS and long COVID, all contributing to a research study that's exploring recovery themes and looking at how people get better. Today, I am so thrilled to introduce you to Monica Marwick. She is a former occupational therapist and a mother of two small children over in Perth, Australia. When she faced a severe medical crisis and a bleak prognosis, Monica refused to accept that there was no solution. She spent like so many people do an enormous amount of money on treatments and tried everything under the sun to get better. But in the end, it was a surprising approach that did not cost that much at all that finally allowed her to fully get past this. This right here is an interview to watch or listen to to the end. Because not only is Monica an amazing person who I know you are going to absolutely love, but she is a wealth of knowledge and information on the science of healing. So let's dive in. Monica, amazing to have you here. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so much, Raylan. So I know it's a tough thing to sum up in a short amount of time, and it's hard to know where to start, but you know, take us back on your health journey. How did this start, or what did things look like before this all started for you? Yeah, yeah, so it's hard. It is hard to like think back and remember the specifics around things, but I had a two very specific, I suppose, medical interventions that kind of kicked off this chronic symptoms for me. So earlier back in 2019, I had an iron infusion, which went wrong in my body and I'd had them in the past and they had always worked really well for me. So it was kind of, I suppose, a method of keeping on top of my iron levels when they dipped, but I went in and I had it routinely and I never recovered from it. I had, I suppose, what we'd call when we, we start talking about structural issues and mind-body issues. I had what was a structural issue happen in my body. So my body started to dump phosphate, which is a key electrolyte. So as a reaction to the iron infusion that was happening to me, it was kind of newer at the time or less known about. So some specialists definitely knew about it, but doctors were kind of unaware. So basically I went home, I had these terrible symptoms. I couldn't wake myself. I was so fatigued. I couldn't walk, I could barely talk, which now I know is key. Phosphate helps us do all of those things in our body. But I was declining, so I was taken to ED. They weren't really sure what to do or how to help me, and so I was left for a few months at home, bedridden with two little kids and my husband looking after me. It took a few months to get into a specialist who read my notes and knew exactly what was going on in my body. But when I walked in to meet him, before I even sat down, he said, I, I know why you're here and I know what's what's happened to you, which was so comforting, I think, having waited a couple of months to get help because we were just managing day to day on our own and, yeah, unable to get up or move. They were really scary symptoms, but there was no point being in a hospital because there was nothing other than giving me the phosphate, which I could take at home, nothing much they could do for me. But he coupled what he said with, oh, do you know that you could have gone into a coma or died from this? It's so serious. And I think your brain hangs on to those, those words, right? They're such fear-driven words. So it was this hopeful moment coupled with this very terrifying situation. I was basically like that for quite a few months. So I had really severe dizziness, hot symptoms, difficulty eating and things like that. 
I was required to go and get blood tests done every single week to check this level because it was a risk if it went too high or too low. And because my body was just weighing it out basically as a malfunction, I was like filling this tank that was never going to get full. And in terms of me going back and seeing this specialist and him monitoring me, I said, how long is this going to take? I, I can't function. And he's like, oh, we don't know. Some people have recovered in two years, some a little bit sooner if it's caught earlier, but we really don't know. And I was like, am I going to be like this forever? And he just couldn't answer that. So I can see now looking back how some of those symptoms were definitely like driven on a physical level with things not being balanced in my body, but how fear intensified them. So severe dizziness, like I couldn't walk down the hallway in our house. I would be like doing this. I would try and catch up with friends or they would come and sit with me in bed and you would kind of get through it because you didn't want people to know how bad it was, but then you would crash. So it, yeah, it took a long time to get over that, but there came a point during that journey where a really good girlfriend gave me a Dr. Joe book and let me download, I don't know, purchases, like meditations that she had used. And I was like, well, there's no one doing his work that has had this specific symptom, but I felt good doing the meditations and they would be like one hour or one and a half hours. And now knowing what I know, I can see how that's putting your body in a state that's more appropriate for healing. Is that, sorry to interrupt, is that Joe Dispenza, the book? Yeah. You're yeah. So I kind of latched onto that and I did a lot of his work. I can't say that I had this miraculous healing, like some of the people that, you know, go to, to his workshops for severe chronic back pain or migraine and, and it just disappears. There was definitely a process, I suppose, of healing that had to go on in my body on a physical level and then reframing to my brain and my body that some of these symptoms are definitely driven by the stress that I'm under. At the time, my youngest was only 18 months when this started and I had a three-year-old as well. So I continued doing that work and eventually I got to the two-year mark and I recovered and I no longer needed to take this drink that I had to drink six times a day and I didn't have to go for blood tests anymore because that in itself is traumatizing. I think every week there's like a damage on a physical level that happened with my veins and arms. And yeah, there just came a point where I slowly improved and started living again. And that was great. So I was stoked and I was well for about a whole month. And then the COVID pandemic was happening already around all of this, but it took a while for it to really, I suppose, hit Australia and, and for our mandates and things like that to come in around the COVID vaccine. So I had my initial two shots of the vaccine, which was what the mandate required. And because I was so excited to go back to my job because I hadn't been able to work, I had done some tiny little bits from home in that time, but I was teaching neuroscience at university. And so I was so happy to go back to work and working in healthcare in Australia at the time the suggestion or the, the strongest suggestion was that we take three vaccines. So I had some hesitancy around that just based on I've been so unwell, my body's already been so displaced for such a long time. I feel like I've had my two, I'm good. But obviously I wanted to follow what the university recommendation was. And so I went and got it and within about seven days of having it, my whole body flooded with pins and needles and numbness. Half of my face went numb and having worked in neuroscience and a background in OT, I, I just thought stroke, I mean, like this is, I'm having a stroke. I luckily didn't go on to have that happen to me, but these symptoms of like severe full body burning that came on kind of within a few like weeks of the tingling happening, my hands felt like they were constantly on a hot plate. My feet felt like I was walking on glass. 
I, I don't know, even talking about it takes you back to that moment of like what, what's going on in my body. I've just gone through this other period of illness. I knew this was going to happen, Raylan. I knew that I would get like quite emotional about it. And yeah, so I had a whole host of like really troublesome symptoms that made functioning every day again, really, really challenging. I think the difficult part was that the initial doctor I saw, he did all the right things in saying, let's go get an MRI, let's get these bloods taken and we'll go from there. So looking back now, I can say I'm grateful that the MRI didn't show a whole lot. There were a few things going on, but nothing um, specifically linked to what I was feeling because I think MS was a big question mark given the symptoms, the fatigue and the neuropathy. So all of that pins and needles and burning. So I was grateful, I suppose, but that situation kind of happened again, where it's like, well, to get into the neurologist here, it's an eight month wait. So you're just going to have to deal with these symptoms until you can see the top specialist. So in that time, I'd obviously been in ER and had the more prominent checks done. So can you still walk properly and can you feel certain things? And I knew what they were doing, I guess, because I had this background already in neuroscience. So there was a level of understanding it all on such a physical level, which I think almost hinders your ability to then move through to the recovery process down the line because you're so stuck in the research says this and the doctors say that, and I can read the papers and understand them and see that no one is getting better from what I was eventually diagnosed with, which was small fiber neuropathy. So if you read about that condition, it, it says everywhere, it's typically a progressive condition. People manage it through nerve blockers and things like that, but are never free of the symptoms. And I think that drives so much fear right? It keeps our brain stuck in that thought pattern. The symptoms keep us stuck because they're so terrifying. And yeah, so it was just a really difficult long period. And I think with a lot of like difficulty with people talking about it or understanding because other people had had their shot and had been completely fine. And then a lot of people ended up like me and I suppose it was a waiting game because it was also new. So it was like a waiting game of, come on, they've got to do some research around what's going on for us to help us. But that can take years. So your thinking is very much like, do I sit around waiting with these symptoms that are so horrific, waiting for them to find out how to treat it or what to do or if they even can? Or, you know the alternative seemed like an exit plan. So it's, it was a very difficult period to be in. Yeah. And I think then when I actually did see a neurologist and he was like, we've seen this before with different, like the HPV vaccine. Yeah. He's like, some people get out of it and some people don't, and we just have to see what your body does. And it's, it's not hopeful. So I felt very left to my own devices to get myself out of it. Along with my partner, he was obviously very supportive and helpful. So it was during this period that I remembered Dr. Joe and I was like, oh yeah, I did that guy's work. And that, that really put my body into a good state. And I was quite hopeful. I started reading about grounding and looking at things I could do because I couldn't do much. So I think because the burning and the kind of glass like feeling was so intense, it kind of keeps you trapped, right? So you do lie in bed and you do sit still because you don't want to move anything in your body. But I would walk outside and stand on the grass and stand in the sun. And I did a lot of that. So very basic things in the beginning. And then it was, I can't even remember, like I wish I could pinpoint the moment where I found a more specific mind body person that was talking about it, but I came across Dr. Howard Schubert to start out with. I think I was on YouTube or reading something and I was like, oh, like what he's talking about is quite interesting. And he had links to Dr. John Sarno, who a lot of people have referenced. And 
but I was like, oh, no, 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 it doesn't relate to me. I don't have back pain. That's not my problem. I've got chronic, like, full body pain. So it, I was interested from, like, I suppose the science perspective, but I was like, it's not, that's not me. And then I just kept reading more of Howard's work and I jumped online and I just like binged watched all of his interviews and then I contacted him and spoke to him about my specific condition and he was amazing. I, yeah, have so much like respect for that man and the time he gave up, of course, like as well to contact me and he was like, no, you can definitely heal from this. This is this is a nervous system thing. And it was kind of when he said that I was like, come on, Monica, like you, you worked in neuroscience, you, you know about all this on such a, a deeper level. And that's when I started to like, look into kind of brain retraining techniques, mind body techniques. We use that stuff for people who have had a stroke to help them start moving their body again and recover. And we know the power of neuroplasticity, but it had taken me such a long time to realize that neuroplasticity was going to be what helped me get out of these chronic symptoms, that it wasn't just isolated to a recovery in a very like physical aspect when damage has happened to the brain. So it was kind of realizing that there is a physical thing going on in our brain when we have physical sensations going on that are chronic. So very different to an acute situation. But once symptoms become chronic and they're turned on and they're 24 seven, then something is going on in the brain. And so there's a really key area. People might be interested and they can do their own reading on it. But the hypothalamus is like this master gland in our brain. And it controls so much for us day to day, homeostasis. So making sure everything is level and functioning well. And when we tip over into these chronic diseases or chronic illnesses, the hypothalamus is on overdrive and it's helping our body to look out for anything that could be harmful to it. But in doing that, it's not doing us any favors on a physical level. So our brains are so fantastic at learning, just like, you know, I've watched my kids, you know, in like two days, they can ride a bike. So they practice, practice, practice. And then day two, it's like they're off. The same thing can be said for our chronic symptoms. Our brain learns so beautifully that every day I wake up and I give this person these symptoms and it happens on repeat. And it's almost like this awful misunderstanding our brain thinks it's protecting us from all these things out there and all the things that have happened to us and have happened even on a physical level. So like when people have dizziness that goes on and becomes chronic, the small fiber neuropathy that I was diagnosed with, the chronic fatigue, it gets really good at feeling safe with sending those symptoms every day and it does it on repeat. So we need to learn how to break that cycle in order to rewire our brain. And we use neuroplasticity to do that. So yeah, that's how I got myself out of the situation. I, I came across these people that were talking about this. It made so much sense to me on a physical level, on a scientific level. And yeah, I embarked, I guess, on the lightning process was the first tool, like first program I tried. And that was amazing for helping me to like kickstart a recovery. But I still had a lot of doubt that it could work. I hadn't come across a lot of people with nerve pain, specifically like mine that had recovered. I was seeing a lot of the same stories around chronic fatigue. And I understand that lots of people can have some neuropathies or tingling as well. But I think I was so focused on the trigger being the vaccine that this had done some really severe damage and it couldn't possibly be the same as, as what everyone else was experiencing. So yeah, I definitely credit a lot to initially the lightning process, but it was later down the track. I came across Claire Coldwell from the mind body reconnect and yeah, that's what I ultimately ended up doing to help myself fully recover. I trained in it with her so that I could go on to help other people. The way she explains this connection between symptoms and sensations and emotions that are linked to that 
and our thoughts and behaviors, it made so much sense. I think initially there was some resistance around looking at emotions and what emotions we have that could be linked to the chronic symptoms that we have. I was, yeah, quite resistant to it. I knew from like a neuro perspective, we all, we always talk with patients or clients around stress increasing any symptoms that they have going on in their body. But what about all the other emotions we feel? They can also have an impact too. And a lot of those stress emotions that we talk about on a very surface level, I suppose in the mind-body reconnect, we can go a little bit deeper and label them a little bit better. So is that fear? Is that doubt? Is that sadness or hurt? And I think it's fair to say that everyone that's gone through a chronic illness, we've experienced a lot of those things. And I guess in order to help myself believe it fully, I had to realize that emotions are, are chemicals. So they're neuropeptides. It's a chemical messenger in our body that happens. We've got so many examples of just easy day-to-day -day things. So even me telling my story at the beginning and feeling sad, well, Within a second, I started crying. So there's a physical thing that happens that we can see. And so the same can be said for those chronic symptoms that feel a lot more unpleasant than tears. So I had to really make that link for myself in order to move forward and get the rest of the recovery that I was seeking. It really helps me to further understand how understandably so many people have resistance to considering mind body, body approaches to recovery and thinking that it doesn't apply to them because hearing about how you have this past knowledge understanding of it and even for yourself it was like but no that's not me so even if you were resistant to it you could understand how the rest of us who didn't have that training are really thinking like no yeah. <laughs> no yeah and you've just bridged really well because I see a little bit what feels like a divide happening of people saying no no I've got structural mechanical issues in my body this doesn't apply to me and what my understanding the more I research the more I understanding is that this applies to everybody yeah. it's just at what at, to what extent you know yeah. at what extent are you needing to do some physical interventions and yeah. how much of the puzzle is going to be addressing the brain yeah. the autonomic nervous system and all of this yeah you know, and that's it. in your I journey knowing that those structural issues that people have and like I had two of them they can they do heal like our body heals from the wildest things and quite quickly like in the time frame of things so I think when you're beyond that point you get to six months or 12 months and these symptoms are still ongoing for you and becoming more and more debilitating we really need to take a step back and look at okay there's something going on our brain has learned something for whatever reason, it's typically to protect us. And well, I need to look at that and how I can help myself with that. And that's something that specialists and doctors are not gifted at doing. It's not part of their training. They do know that stress causes things to get worse in the body, but explaining it just that basically to a client or a patient doesn't help them because it doesn't give them anywhere to go. And it I think can tend to make them even more stressed because then they're thinking, oh, I can't ever be stressed because it's going to create this cascade. But yeah, I think when I initially embarked on the lightning process, I really gave my therapist a run for her money because I was so difficult because I had this background and I'm like, but what about this? And what about this? And she handled it so well. But uh, even talking to Howard Schubiner on small fiber neuropathies. So they structurally, they cut out a piece of your skin and they test it and they can see this doesn't have the same amount of nerve fibers that should be in a healthy body that is not experiencing these symptoms. And he pointed me in the direction of some amazing research where they skin biopsied loads of people and loads of those people had it showed this low fiber density in their results, but they had no symptoms. Oh. So that just goes to show this test is not as accurate and as foolproof as we're being told, but because we're told that's what you have, you put it in this box of like, okay, well, that's what I have. And they've told me it's progressive. So all I can expect is that how could these symptoms get any worse? But that's what you're led to believe. 
But if you actually go and look at the research, and similar can be said with back pain where they've done loads of MRIs, seen bulging discs and abnormal development in the spine, but those people don't have pain. So what's going on for the ones that end up developing pain? And that's where the mind-body reconnect is so powerful because we delve into what else was going on in your life at the time that this popped up. And sometimes maybe they can't come up with something or they don't see what was going on in their life, but they can see how the symptoms are driven now in the present constantly by fear or doubt or you know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Claire Caldwell is amazing. I've interviewed quite a few people who have gone through her program and done really well. So I'll link her information in the video description if people want to learn more. And you see why you hear from no matter who it is that you're talking to that is leading the, the way in these spaces, that understanding it is the first part because there's so many misunderstandings or lack of information around this that keeps you from getting it. Like you talked about the structural damage. We now know there's loads of research out there showing that there is virtually no correlation between structural damage in the body and the symptoms that you're experiencing. So when we're trying to divide ourselves into these two groups of structural damage versus non-structural damage, when it comes to chronic symptoms, it's not looking like that distinction is so important. Like you said, many people with structural damage have no symptoms and many people without them are in severe pain and the pain feels physically coming from your body regardless of the cause. That's it. It's so real. The pain is so real. But no matter what pain, whether we have touched a stovetop or not, and we've got that same symptom or sensation, it's still turned on by our brain. It's our brain that controls the whole process. So no matter whether it was structural or not, it all leads back to the same place. It does. It's like there's a communication in the body where it sends up that signal to the brain, danger, danger, and the brain's like, okay, now I need to dispatch some symptoms. What do I send? Burning. Do I send fatigue? Do I send pain? Do I send nausea? Are they eating something poisonous? It's all about keeping us alive. And I think many of us think that pain and suffering just happens and you know, it's an unfortunate yeah, part of life, <laughs> but it's all just, it's all there to keep us alive. And another key thing that I've learned along the way is that because some people think, okay, I've learned some of this and I understand it. So my symptoms should just turn off Yeah. because now I get what's going on. And for some people, it does happen very quick, but that yeah. definitely seems to be exception, not the norm. But we've, we're, we're, we've learned that our brains rewire things create those neural pathways to keep us alive very quickly. So anything around danger that's going to fire and wire really fast because keeping us alive is priority one. Whereas turning off those symptoms is a slower process for most of us because that's just how the brain works and it makes sense. You know, keep us alive, we're going to lock those in quickly, whereas retraining it to undo some of those can take a little bit of time. So there's all these complicated things that we need to understand. It's It really is so radically different from how most of us were brought up to think about health and symptoms and healing. I can see why we're all really struggling to figure out what is going on here and what applies to us and how this applies to us. Exactly. And I think having gone through, I studied as an occupational therapist initially and went and worked in that area and then went back to teach this neuroscience unit. I was like, there's no way I can go back. I can't go back to that job. I, I felt so limited in what you can talk about or explain. We talked about neuroplasticity, but on a completely different level in relation to just the types of clients we would see. But imagine if I was telling those students, you could use this for so many other symptoms, well, every other symptom in the body, that it becomes chronic. And yeah, I just couldn't go back to teaching in that way. Something really needs to change, I suppose, around the way we're given information as patients ourselves. And yeah, I was like, I have to go out and share this and and work with people in a different way. And once you understand it, it's just, it's such a great tool to have for life because it helps you to understand how not just to deal with symptoms, but how to, you have so much more power. We have so much more power to yeah. control our brain and those neural pathways than we think. So we can use it for phobias, for addictions, for yeah. learning new sports, for learning to play an instrument. It, yeah. There's just so many things when you understand some of these 
brain retraining approaches that it just really helps you to live your life better. And it sounds like you, like many people like myself, once you get tapped into this, it's just like I need this is the way forward for me you know, with my career and where my focus area is. So what did that look like for you and how did it shift what you're doing now? Yeah. So I think I was just so inspired. It was obviously Howard Schubner was a huge inspiration for me, but also I came across another spinal surgeon, Dr. David Hanscom, who he was a spinal surgeon for many, many years, like top of the game. And he left that profession similar to Howard to pursue mind body work with people. And I just felt so inspired, like, yep, I've just got to do the same. And there was no point having gone through, you know, three, four years of those awful symptoms to then not do something with it. But I understand too, when people are like, no, I just want to go back and live my life. And their passion is not necessarily working with people. But for me, having come from healthcare, my passion is working with people. And so I went and studied with Claire Coldwell, who such an inspiration, has been doing this work for many, many years, well before all of our access to YouTube. And I don't know how she's managed to, to keep it going because I can imagine how hard it would have been years ago talking about this with people, let alone now where we have access to books and YouTube and the internet and research papers, and it's still a challenge. So I yeah, went and studied the Mind Body Reconnect, and now I'm working with my own clients, helping them on their recovery journey. Yeah, and I, I guess I just continue learning more and more about it as time's gone on. How incredible with your background and your experience and the empathy that you would bring to this and just the insight. It just what a gift it is that you're out there helping people. I think this is so incredible. Monica, I'm just, my heart has been breaking as you've been telling your story so many times. I've just wanted to reach through the screen and give you a hug. Nobody should have to go through this. And with two small children, I don't even know how. I, and I imagine you still don't know either. You just do. Like, what other choice do you have? Happy tears. <laughs> yeah. So incredible. And we have this information now and we know it. And for those of us that are in it every day, every week, it starts to feel like it's everywhere. But much of the world still doesn't know this information. Yeah. And there are many people that could be helped by it. So I think it's great. So great that you're here doing what you do. Thank you, Raylan. And for people watching, of course, if you want to get in touch with Monica, all of her information will be in the description. So please expand that. Take a look. You can learn more about her, learn more about the work she does, get in touch with her, learn more about Claire Caldwell's program, Mind Body Reconnect. Um, just lots of really great stuff there. Wow. A million thanks to you, Monica. This has been so informative and enlightening and humbling. Just thank you so much for you know, being brave enough to come here and share your story and for just doing what you do. Yeah, thank you. And same, Raylan, because if you weren't here doing that, the work that you do, you know, so many of us wouldn't have found the way out of this. So, yeah, I think we all appreciate the work you do. Oh, thank you. It's my absolute honor to do it. I love doing it. Um, and if you, I don't know if you've seen at the end of my videos, but I always send a shout out to one of my channel members because we have people who join the channel and support the channel. Um, so today I just want to say uh, hello and big hugs to Boss Lendiers. Thank you so much for joining. I hope uh, you're enjoying the perks that you're getting. And again, uh, to all of you watching, as always, looking forward to your thoughts. What do you think about this? What is your experience about this? We're talking about some subjects that we don't talk about a lot, like vaccine injury and things that a lot of people are facing. So if this is something that you're also going through, please let us know in the comments because it's it's not doing anyone any favors for us to pretend that these things aren't happening. So, and I will link, if you'd like to learn more about Claire Caldwell and her program, I did an incredible interview with her here on the channel. She's amazing. You're going to love her. So I'll put that up here as well for people watching if you want to check it out. So thank you again, Monica. Thank you to all of you watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a ton out of it and I hope to see you in this next one here with Claire.